Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome back, pet parent. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, I will go ahead and apologize in advance for my voice if it starts cracking. I have been sick. <laughs> um, it was the first time I have been sick in many years. And yeah, so I, I do apologize in advance for my voice. It is a little congested <laughs> still. I'm still trying to get over. But uh, today's podcast episode is really, really interesting because we're talking about cancer screening tests. Um, currently, they are available for dogs. And I have a feeling it's not going to be too much longer before we have them for cats as well. Uh, but I wanted to kind of give you an overview of what that is, what that looks like, and what to talk to your veterinarian about to make sure that your vet uh, knows that this cancer screening is available and can be done very simply with a fasted blood draw. So with that, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. So this cancer screening for dogs is available through Texas A&M. Um, they announced it last fall. So it was around September, October of 2021 that this was announced. This is, this is a brand new offering. Um, it's a very cost-effective cancer screening. And what Texas A&M shows is that they have been able to screen for and detect 77% of lymphomas and 82% of hemangiosarcomas. Um, all that's required is a fasted blood draw, make it, making it a minimally invasive option that can be done at annual veterinary visits. And this does have to be done through your veterinarian. So uh, if this is something that you are interested in, it's wise for you to make your veterinarian aware of it because maybe not all veterinarians are aware of it. It's, it's still pretty new. So it is through the Texas A&M um, Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences uh, Laboratories. It's the new Q, so N-U period, Q, the letter Q, <laughs> um, new Q vet cancer screening test. So I'm just going to read you a little bit on the Texas A&M website about the test. It says, after leading in the research and development of Volition's new Q trademarked, that, that name is trademarked, new Q, vet cancer screening test, the Texas A&M CVMBS <laughs> uh, is now offering this easy to use cost effective cancer test through the GI lab. It represents a significant development in veterinary medicine as until the release of this test, there were no accurate, simple, and affordable ELISA cancer screening tests available. So cancer screening was not done through blood work prior to this test. Now, I said at the beginning that I don't think it's going to be too far off before we get there with our cats as well. I think those of us in the pet industry kind of know at this point that whatever happens happens for dogs first <laughs> and then things kind of trickle down to our cats while that's unfortunate it's kind of the way it is um so you know we just know about it and then when when something happens for dogs we kind of push for okay now let's get it for our cats and i think you know we've had I, I think a lot of this has been brought on not only by, you know, the, the scientists and researchers behind the scenes who are just tirelessly working and researching and, and trying to figure out any and everything they can about medicine for us and for our pets, for humans and for, for our pets alike. Um, but also, I think a lot of it has to do with the huge databases that are being created through DNA testing. Um, sim so if you ever heard of the Embark dog DNA tests, they've been around for a little while, not too terribly long, but you know, a number of years. 
And so they have huge databases. Um, and I think that helps play into a lot of the research and discoveries that we're seeing now. And more recently, there are cat DNA tests available. Um, one is called Base Paws. Um, this is a cat DNA test. Now, I have personally not done the Base Paws breed DNA report yet. Um, I'm very interested in it. Not because I need to know what breeds my cats are. Um, I don't. That that I think for cat people, that's much less important in general um, than knowing what kind of breed your dog is. Like when people, when you talk to people about your dog, they're like, oh, what kind of dog is it? But when you talk to people about your cat, they're like, oh, that's cool. You've got a cat, <laughs> right? It's, they're, it's not the same kind of thing. But because we are now seeing all of these things that we've been seeing for our dogs now start to come about for our cats, like this base pause DNA kit, um, they are now creating databases of cat DNA similar to the way they've been creating databases of dog DNA. And I think that has a lot to do with advances in research and medicine. So if you've never done an uh, Embark or any other sort of DNA test for your dog, uh, what's really interesting is that when you get the kit, you fill out a survey and you give them lots of information on the health of your dog. Um, this is how they're able to make correlations between the DNA and, and what they're um, sequencing and what's going on with your dog. And that is what I'm assuming is also the case with the cat DNA test. And if for no other reason, I would be interested in doing the cat DNA testing just to add more information to these databases. Um, and another thing that when I was looking up researching for today's podcast on the Base Paws website, which is the cat DNA test, uh, they actually have research programs that you can enroll in uh, for your cat. So they have research programs on CKD, which is chronic kidney disease, longevity, dental diseases, uh, GI lymphomas, atopic dermatitis, food allergies, uh, diabetes, IBD, and neutrogenomics, um, which you can apply for. And then, in addition to that, uh, they say additional conditions of interest include cancer, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, FIP, obesity, osteoarthritis, idiopathic cystitis, oxalate urolithesis, um, and struvite urolithesis. So those are going to be um, crystals, urinary crystals. Uh, so... I think that we are going to see huge advancements in cat research as well, and I think we're not too terribly far away from um, blood testing for cancer screening in cats as well. But before we, you know, get ahead of ourselves because we're not there yet, let's talk a little bit more about this dog cran cancer screening. So, um, again, as I said at the beginning, this is something that your once your veterinarian is aware of it, um, they can do. They can submit this uh, blood test. It does need to be a fasted blood test, um, meaning your pet needs to fast before their blood draw. Uh, and this is something that your vet will be able to do just, you know, at your annual visit, as long as your vet is aware of it, of course. So according to the Texas a and website, it says when to use. The test is available to veterinarians in North America for use during annual wellness checks for older dogs, for cases where there is a suspicion of cancer, or for younger dogs from breeds with a high risk for developing cancer in their lifetimes. The new Q vet cancer screening test may not be able to differentiate between significant systemic inflammation and cancer. If you would like to discuss if this test is appropriate for your patient or would like to discuss results, please contact, and then they give information, um, to where your vet can set up a free consultation with one of their oncologists at the Texas A&M uh, Veterinary Veterinary Medicine University. Um, dogs that not, have not been fasted may have artificially elevated nucleosome levels and should be retested after fasting. If your pa patient has not been fasted, please indicate this on the submission form. How it works. 
The new Q vet cancer screening test measures and identifies circulating nucleosomes, which are early markers of cancer from a simple blood sample. How cool is that? This is, I mean, guys, this is brand new as of fall 2021. Um, so of course, it's only going to get better, right? As time goes on. This has never in the history of history <laughs> been done before. Like advancements in medicine like this are incredible to me. Um, of course, I never want any animal uh, to have to deal with a cancer diagnosis, but knowing early, knowing ahead of time, I mean, we, we know that the best, the best medicine is to be proactive and stay healthy, right? But when something does happen, the earlier we catch it, the better off our chances are of defeating it, of recovering from it. So, um, Let's see, it continues to say at 97% specificity, the test has been shown to detect 77% of lymphomas and 82% of hemangiosarcomas, two of the most common cancers in dogs that comprise approximately one third of canine cancers. That's pretty significant. The benefit for the veterinarian, the pet owner, and the dog is a streamlined diagnostic process. It's simpler, quicker, and less invasive diagnostics with the goal of providing quality of life to the pet and more quality time with its owner, as well as providing value valuable additional information to inform the clinical decision making process. Guys, this is this is just incredible and it is something that I had heard of and I wanted to do a little bit more research on. I wanted to figure out like how how far away do we think we are in um you know getting rolling this out to where all veterinarians know about it. I think the more we know about it as pet parents, the more we can inform our veterinarians and let them know this is something we want them to offer. Um, and as for how far away are we from having the same kind of test for our cats, I don't know, but I don't think we're too far off. I would venture to guess that certainly within 10 years, um, we would have the same thing for our cats, if not sooner. And I say sooner because now that we have the framework for dogs, I don't, I, I don't think it's a huge leap to, to get there for our cats. We now know what it takes to get there for dogs. So getting there for cats is, I think, going to be a little bit easier. So if you are at all interested in this test, ask your veterinarian about it, about it. Let them know that it is through the Texas A&M University Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, or just, just say testis, Texas A&M, um, through their GI lab. And it is the new Q vet cancer screening test. Um, it, this is, this is incredible. I think this is going to be a game changer for a lot of people, for a lot of dogs. I don't, see a necessity and getting Tim, uh, Tim, <laughs> I'm, I'm so congested. I'm, I'm not even saying my own dog's name, right. Um, and getting Kim screened for cancer at this moment, I think she's pretty good though. I, if my veterinarian thought it would be worthwhile, I would absolutely do it. Um, I would with my cats in a heartbeat because I have had multiple cats die of cancer, uh, and, Cats are just more, in my opinion, in my experience, more difficult to figure out that they're even sick, that there's even something wrong with them. And by the time we figure it out, it is much later in the disease progression than, than with their dog counterparts. So for that reason alone, I would be interested in doing the base pause DNA testing for my cats. Uh, if you are interested in getting the Embark testing, DNA testing done on your dog or the Base Paws DNA testing done on your cat, uh, I will have links on the website. So you can go, I'll have it in a couple different places depending on where you frequent. If you go to the petparentingreset.com, I will have a link there. And um, you, if you go to my blog, jessicalfisher.com, it will be on my specials page as well. I have a bunch of different specials there for you guys. Um, and any time one of my favorite 
companies has a permission I updated. So you're going to find links to Animalio. You're going to find links to, you know, Darwin's pet food, um, vital animal, all, all of the things, vital pet health, um, and embark. Embark is one of them as well. And I will add base paws there. So jessicaelfisher.com slash specials. Uh, you'll be able to see that as well. So I think this is just an incredible, incredible advancement in medicine for our pets and something that it is absolutely worthwhile talking to your veterinarian about, especially if you have an older dog or a dog that uh, your vet is already concerned about cancer or a breed that is known for uh, cancer. So Talk to your veterinarian about it. Hopefully, you know, you have, we've just said this so many times <laughs> between YouTube and the podcast and every, everywhere else, Patreon. If you are not um, already a Patreon supporter, I, I do hope to see you over there. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. It helps me to continue to bring content like this podcast out to you. Uh, but I've talked about it so many times. I hope you are seeing a, a, an integrative veterinarian um, integrative meaning they use both holistic modalities and Western medicine together. That's my favorite. Um, I like holistic medicine a lot, but there is definitely a time and place for Western medicine, just like we're talking about today with these cancer screenings. This is this is a game changer. So I hope this is helpful. Please reach out to me if you have any comments, questions. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Make sure you are following the Pet Parenting Reset wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have not already rated the podcast, I hope you do so. That's one of the best ways to help these uh, platforms know what kind of podcasts people are liking and suggesting this podcast to other people. And I, again, hope to see you on Patreon. Go to patreon.com and search for the Pet Parenting Reset, or you can search for my name, Jessica Fisher. Um, and you can also go to thepetparentingreset.com, and right there at the top of the page, there's a link to Patreon. So again, for as little as a dollar a month, I hope to see you over there because you get loads of content that I don't post anywhere else. And I also hope you're following me on Instagram, Jessica Lynn Fisher on Instagram. So with that, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me again on today's podcast. If you have any comments, questions, again, please feel free to reach out to me on any social media. Uh, if you are a Patreon follower, of course you are, you get first access to me. <laughs> um, so you can always comment, you know, if you have a comment or a question on any of the posts there. With that, I hope you'll have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for being here. And until next week, give your pets some extra love from me. Bye guys. Oh, oh, oh.